I'm going to teach you the things that I've learned by, by the Spirit and possibly cut down the time that it takes to, to walk in all these things by up to 75%. So can you imagine um, you know, learning what I learned in 40 years, learning it in 10 or learning it in five? You know, This is possible because the Spirit's so willing in these last days to accelerate us. The first thing I want to talk to you about with this is is uh, being broken and being humble, and um, that you know these are not always uh, popular subjects because I, I understand that uh, some Christian circles want to keep it real positive and want to speak certain things all the time. But the bottom line is is that Jesus um, Jesus learned um, obedience by what he suffered, and we we learn obedience by what we suffer. And there are times where uh, God disciplines us. I'm going to teach you the things that I've learned by, by the Spirit and possibly cut down the time that it takes to, to walk in all these things by up to 75%. So can you imagine um, you know, learning what I learned in 40 years, learning it in 10 or learning it in 5? You know, This is possible because the Spirit's so willing in these last days to accelerate us. A lot of things seem to be left uh, on, uh, you know, it seems like they're not um, always um, addressed. And you see things in the world, you see evil people, you see people prospering that are evil. But you have to remember that God let things go for a long time before he brought judgment. And in this case today, he is very patient because he wants to see people get saved. And so you're going to see the judgment of God. And that's why I read Psalms 29 a lot. And I submit to him because I, I realize that his voice is very powerful and that he is very powerful, majestic. And at any one moment, he could, he could do whatever he wants. And if he would lose patience with people and, and uh, start the end time judgment where, where we would be extracted out and walk like Enoch did and just walk over, I mean, the world would just turn upside down in just a matter of an hour. And you got to remember that, that that if God actually stopped being silent, it seems, uh, he, 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 you would see a lot of things uh, come undone. And so he has spoken through his son in these last days, and he has spoken the gospel. And that's the, that's the assignment we have. We know that the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit. So today, all of us are depending upon him. When you take the courses, you know, when you read your Bible, when you pray, it's, it's really relying on the Spirit of God to help you. But you also have to remember, just as, as my instructors reminded me when I was in school, that, that uh, Brother Hagen said this. He said um, that, that you, we also have to be known as people of the, the, of the, uh, of the Spirit, not just the Word. And, and so the, the Word of God, you know, when it's spoken in a powerful way, it literally physically breaks things, you know, and that's what we got to remember. So um, remember that the, the Spirit is, is the Spirit of God, but He is also the Word of God. And so the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So even though it, it's a spiritual thing, the Word is also a audible thing so that we speak it. But it's also the Word is written. So you have the Word on a, uh, pages of, of the Bible, but you also have it spoken. And so the Spirit can take the Word and make it very powerful. The bottom line here is that we need to remove the, the limitations off uh, that we put on God to do things a certain way. And this has to do with control. So it, we, if we can make God predictable, we feel like we can control things a lot better. But, you know, in these last days, if you're going to have the command of heaven about you, you're essentially going to have to be submitted to the authority of heaven, and then you're going to have to just do what you're told. And, and what happens is, is if you notice, when God starts to move in what we would call a revival or a move of God, um, which I don't even think that the body of Christ needs a revival or a move of God, I think they just need to do what they're, what they're already been given. And that creates the move or the revival. But, you know, if you notice that God actually goes out of the box and then chooses people that are, that are not uh, even known, and he chooses small places uh, that are way off the, the beaten path. You know, they're, they're not near a highway. They're not a big city. It makes it a little uh, harder to get to, those kind of things. So, and he also chooses the youth a lot of times to move upon. So that God will start moving among the youth or the students. And um, this has been a common practice and, um, with God. 
he's looking for people that are that are able to flow with whatever God's doing. And so kids, when they feel the power of God, they're able to just go with it. Whereas adults, uh, we want to you know, have an explanation for everything and we want to feel like we have control over it. And I think that's what happens with ministry. Here at Warrior Notes, all of us are learning. You know, the Lord has taught me and, and trained me, but it took many, many years. But see, now all of you being connected with Warrior Notes, we can um, learn together. And I can teach you everything that I've learned, and uh, you can get the same anointing that's on me and do the same things or even greater than me, just like Jesus told us that we would do greater things than him. But I want you to know that there's, there's a lot of, of, of uh, things that you go through in that walk with God, you know, individually, that is crushing. You know, it's actually people get broken hearted and, and traumatized and things happen in this life. It's how you deal with that. It's, it's, it's literally how you deal with disappointment and trauma is, is, and making it through. So I wanna encourage you all that, that the anointing that you, you sense on Warrior Notes is because of sacrifice and, and brokenness and, and things that have happened to us that um, you know, nobody knows about, but that causes and increases that flow of the anointing. But uh, those of you who want to walk in this, you also have to have the same heart or the same attitude, or you're going to, in, you know, not going to be able to sustain it. So that's why, you know, you go from conference to conference, and this is what happened to me. I, I started to sense that I had to keep going from conference to conference, and then I had to buy this CD series and this book, and, I, you know, it just seems like it was constant all the time. And I realized, well, what can I do to just maintain this? And the Lord said, you got to humble yourself, you got to submit, and you've got to learn to walk in this anointing yourself. You all need to accept the full counsel of God because you're teachers, but you got to walk in this yourself, then you're going to have to relay it to the people that you're going to teach, you know, and lead. Because all of you at Warrior Notes, um, all you students are leaders. To me, you know, I'm assigned to train leaders, people that are going to um, bring back Jesus, you know, in, in this lifetime or in the, the immediate one after. So this, this next generation may be the one, it may be us. We, I mean, I'm trying to push so that it's in our lifetime, you know, and we can do that if we all get on the same uh, page together, we can actually usher in the coming of the Lord, but we have to get out there by the power of God and preach the gospel. But see, Jesus wouldn't have said anything unless it was truth and it was uh, for us today because truth is eternal. You know, the real truth is eternal. So it says that we can enter into God's kingdom only through one gate. So there's only one gate one way into heaven and that is a gate that is narrow and so god doesn't want to lose you so he wants you to have character and he wants to be able to trust you so this is the the difficult narrow way which keeps us humble but then we encounter the command of heaven The Lord said, you tell the students tonight that it's not just what they do, it's who they are. And he also said that the, the default, the default, in other words, the backstop, if all else fails, you remember that you were sent, that, that who, you, who you are is who he is and what he's made you. So, so in the days ahead, there's gonna be a mighty army that is, is, is risen up. So this is Pastor Mike, Dean of Warning Oaks School of Ministry, and what excites my heart the most is that so many people that said they didn't know they could or had people that told them they couldn't are here and they've done it. And what excites me even further than that is what God has in store for them because they're going from breakthrough to living in overthrow. <laughs>